Hey everyone, welcome back to Dry Bar Reviews, where today we're looking at the AFS 55 to 200 millimeter lens from Nikon. It's a smaller, more compact zoom lens that's supposed to still pair well with your kit lens, as it gives you that longer range so you can zoom into your subjects and still get those crystal clear quality shots. But the question is, will it work just as well as the heavier, more robust lenses? Or is there a lot of sacrifice for that lightweight and compact ability? Let's find out today and unbox and try out the 55 to 200 millimeter. Here we go. Pow. All right, on the box here we have AFS DX Nikkor 55 to 200 millimeter F4 to 5.6G ED VR2 lens. Here we go. Right in there, pretty simplistic packaging here. But what do you expect? This is actually a really affordable lens. I think you can find it on sale pretty regularly, around $150 right now. So you can get this pretty cheap. And wow, look at that. That. They're not kidding when they say it's compact. I mean, that is small. Just for comparison here, here's the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. And the only way to use this kit lens is with that unlock button. And I believe they're using the same technology on this lens. So let's see here. Yeah, there's the unlock. So there it is at 55 millimeters and there's that at 18 millimeters. And honestly, <laughs> as far as how long it is, it's about the same uh, as far as compact, but man, it's nice that they have that ability to really make it storable, that lock ring, if you like that. Okay, but once again, as you see as a motif with these cheaper lenses, they don't give you a branded back cover. They just give you these little plastic covers. They do the job. They just don't actually latch on. They just kind of sit on there with a little bit of tension. And there she is. Looks to be in good quality condition. So right here where you have the focal lengths, you also have that L to symbolize it's in the locked position, just in case you're wondering. And then there's the zoom 55 to 200. And yeah, pretty smooth. Pretty consistent resistant throughout the zoom, which is always nice to see. We've got our switches over here where we have vibration reduction on and off. And of course we have only automatic and only manual mode, which I know you guys have kind of heard me talk about this. I kind of find it annoying when they don't have an MA mode, but you know, when you have a lens that's this cheap, it kind of makes sense that they've not included that ability in there. So of course, when you're in manual mode, you can manually focus here. This focus ring, a little loose there it's a little slack but it'll do its job well and then you go to automatic and of course then you can't focus at all because it's automatic only i'm gonna have it in vr for now and man i am really curious to see how it performs i mean look at this this is a 300 millimeter lens and this is 200 millimeters just so much smaller in comparison and even if you take it off of its locked status and you go into 55 um with this lens at 55 Look at the comparison there. This is going to be far less transportable, depending on your case, you know, and it is a lot lighter. So they're not lying when they say that they really made this to be compact and lightweight. Uh, the question really is, will it perform as well as something like this 300 millimeter lens? All right, let's slap it on the D7500 and see how it performs. <laughs> the 55 to 200 millimeter lens. And I don't know about you, but I was impressed because as far as an F4 to 5.6 lens, this performed exactly as you would expect. It performed just on par with lenses that are twice, three times more expensive than this lens. So 
you know, if you're looking for a lens that has that 200 millimeters, you don't need the extra range to 300 millimeters. This is phenomenal. Compact, lightweight, cheaper, able to get that nice zoom. And the autofocus almost felt crisper, <laughs> a little faster than the last lens I just reviewed. And even the 300 millimeter lens, that was the AFS model. So I was impressed with what it offers based on its cost. Now, that being said, the $400 300 millimeter zoom lens was sharper, a little crisper, um, able to get in much closer, of course, with more clarity there. So, but like 10%, it was like a 10% difference. So this really, I mean, as far as a, a pair up with the kit lens, I mean, that's exactly what it is. It's a fantastic thing to throw into a bag just in case you want that extra range to get closer to your subjects. And beyond that, as far as distortion, barrel distortion is minimal at best. And I didn't really even see any pincushion distortion. So impressive considering how small they created this lens and that zoom range in there. Now, if you're interested in this lens for yourself, I'll post a link in the description below. But don't forget to comment and let me know what you think about this lens, about this camera, and all things in general when it comes to photography. But thanks for tuning in, guys. Don't forget to tune in next time to Drive-By Reviews.